So in today's episode, we look for ways to partner with corporate social responsibility teams to infuse social impact throughout your business. Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to the Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tips to help them scale and grow their CSR and goodness programs. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today we have a very special show. Um, we have three special guests. Uh, first guest, who is actually a uh, today's co-host, is Catherine Pisco with Benevity. Uh, I also have Amanda Reed, who is a global diversity, equity, and inclusion program manager with Cummins, and Whitney Wilbur, who is the global employer uh, brand leader with Cummins as well. Awesome. Welcome. And thanks so much, Carl. Whitney and Amanda, we're so happy to have you as part of the show today. Um, for those of you that are listening or watching and, and may not know, Cummins, uh, these two ladies are joining us from Cummins, which is an American multinational corporation that designs, manufactures, and distributes engines, filtration, and power generation products. Uh, while they're headquartered in Columbus, Indiana, but they have over 61,000 global employees. And so really excited to hear a little bit uh, today from you both. And I figured it'd be great if, if you don't mind, we could kick it off. Um, uh, if you could both tell us a little bit about your, your role at Cummins. Um, you know, this, we like to, um, we've, we've had a lot of CSR professionals on in the past that have talked about their roles. And this is a little unique and kind of fun to have two folks um, that aren't necessarily in CSR, but working closely with the CSR team. So Amanda, would you be able to start us off? Sure, thanks for having us also. We're really excited to be here today. Um, so my role is I get to help infuse strategies for our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, primarily for talent acquisition, but on a global scale. So all job categories, um, all levels of experience, and how can we just be really thoughtful and mindful about designing systems and processes that drive equity in very ethical ways. Um, I also have the pleasure to get to help support the CARE initiative, which is a special initiative through our CEO, under our corporate responsibility arm, um, and it's Cummins advocating for racial equity. Um, and it is a very passionate movement within the organization. Whitney is actually um, someone who's supporting some of those work streams as well as an employee for Cummins, um, where we're trying to help our communities do better and also think about driving equity more ethically um, in areas that are controversial for some companies, but where we see it as just being a part of our values and doing the right thing. And Whitney, could you tell us a little bit about your role too? Sure, I would love to. And thank you for having me. Uh, so my name is Whitney Wilbur and I lead global employer branding and recruitment marketing for Cummins. Um, it's a little bit of an interesting space because uh, myself and my team set within our external communications team within our communications organization. Um, but we are very much embedded within our talent ac acquisition organization. Um, and uh, you know, our team, um, you know, we have a lot of passion around supporting um, and building brand and helping to source top talent uh, for Cummins. Uh, our responsibilities really live within talent attraction communications, um, employer brand strategy and build outs, uh, EVP, that would be employer value proposition, uh, development and adoption concentrated on those efforts. Uh, and we're really focused on the candidate experience um, through not only our own marketing channels and how we attract and bring in talent, uh, source talent, but also through the technology, uh, through our talent acquisition organization. Um, and we're really focused in partnering uh, with people like Amanda when it comes to social sourcing and digital marketing campaigns uh, to support talent acquisition. To st kick us off, I wanted to just talk a little bit about, um, I think we, we all kind of know this to be true, but then there's research that backs it up. Um, in fact, a recent Forbes study revealed that companies who promote collaborative work uh, were up to five times more likely to be really high performing. 
But collaborating during at any time is really tough. And I think especially during COVID when we're all remote um, is even more challenging. And so I was hoping um, you already spoke to it a little bit when you're explaining kind of your roles and collaboration, but why have you found that it's so important to work cross-functionally at Cummins? And then specifically, if we can dial in even more um, around to, to really also find ways to collaboratively infuse that social impact in these programs. Um, Whitney, would you mind starting us off? Sure, sure. Um, You know, being able to work cross-functionally with different teams, um, not within our own organizations, is key for our employer brand group, Um, especially around instances where we want to bring our EVP to life and step outside of the box with making, um, uh, I guess you could say partnerships with uh, different charities or organizations uh, that make an impact and really represent our values. Um, Part of my job and my team's responsibility is really to bring our employer value proposition to life. Um, And by working cross-functionally with groups such as corporate responsibility, we're able to understand more about Um, partnerships that are in place with different charities and different organizations and not-for-profits and how we can um, really storytell and um, insert those great bits of work that we're doing to positively impact people's lives, uh, not only uh, uh, in the communities in which Cummins has, uh, you know, a location or a presence, but, you know, really globally. Um, So working cross-functionally with corporate responsibility, with partners within talent acquisition, um, and also um, with leaders within the business uh, that we're trying to, you know, attract into different technology spaces, Um, It's really important um, for us to to make those connections network, even if it feels uh, a bit foreign. Um, We we tend to always make a connection and um, create really good work together. I love the way you put that, too, because it doesn't always it feels a little foreign or maybe a little unnatural. And it's actually just pushing yourself to to do that. And then, you know, it, it, it seems and excited to hear even more. But once you do that the possibilities are, are endless. Amanda, would you be able to speak to that at all as well? Yeah, I think, especially for an organization our size, we're so big, we're so global. It's really at the core about recognizing and taking advantage of the expertise that is all around you. Corporate responsibility, they know how to vet these organizations. They understand how to decipher what can make the greatest impact. Whitney's team knows how to tell those stories, how to touch people. And our team, we have the DE&I expertise and the talent acquisition expertise. So we know what our strategies are, what we want to accomplish, but together is how we have to make that happen. Our strategies are going to die on the vine without Whitney's team there to actually bring them to life. And without those relationships from corporate responsibility, how could we really trust that we're making the right decisions for partnerships and maximizing things they've already built um, and optimizing them even more? You know, we're right now having conversations with an amazing refugee program that our corporate responsibility group has worked with for years and um, we want to optimize that. We want to we want to move past the support systems we've already been providing, and let's start using the other things we have at our hands, like jobs, and and people who are experts in resume writing, and and we can actually find people life changing opportunities, not just helping them set up for success and helping them with those other aspects. It's really a win win win, um, but we need each other to achieve that. So you both mentioned the importance of, well, you actually emphasize the importance of working with the, the corporate social responsibility teams. Can you mention why that's important and um, any of the successes or challenges that you've had uh, when you've had to work with those teams? And maybe Whitney, uh, you can go first. You don't know what you don't know, right? So it takes time just to reach out to someone and um, maybe be a bit vulnerable with a an idea, right? Um, and I think what's really worked for us is that we've learned along the way um, and we've built trust within um, different groups, right? Um, and 
with that collaboration, um, we've created some really meaningful um, marketing material and uh, really meaningful connections with, with people through um, so, some of the, the events that we processed um, through those, you know, just asking questions and asking if uh, the corporate responsibility team or um, other groups within communications are opening to open to partnering together. Uh, Amanda, I guess, how, what would your feeling be this on working with the CSR teams and I guess everybody else, any other teams and departments in Cummins? Well, to be fair, I can tend to be a little bit of a bull in a china shop. <laughs> and I'm very fortunate that um, Cummins as a culture gives a lot of grace and understands positive intent. Um, and I've had good partners like Whitney to kind of help me understand, you know, as how the organization works. And the fact of the matter is a lot of these organizations, especially in a big company, are somewhat siloed naturally. They have different reporting lines. They have different smart goal alignments. Um, there's a lot of things that maybe don't help enable some organic collaboration but we've been in a really good scenario that Whitney's helped me navigate a lot of her relationships as somebody who's been with the company longer as well. So that way we can make things happen. Um, you know, we did an amazing period poverty campaign with the Society of Women Engineers, and that wouldn't have happened without those types of relationships and that type of collaboration. And we actually created a SWAT project team to work through some of those growing pains of how do we partner together? How can we be most effective and achieve the greatest good? Like, I'm sure, you know, those relationships aren't built overnight. Like, it's, it's a lot of, uh, like, do you start with small projects as, and then grow from there? Or is it something that, you know, you, you want to have them right at the beginning of a major, major initiative? So I would say that... Um, you got to eat the elephant one ear at a time. And for a company like Cummins, a corporate responsibility is huge. It's vast. It's super mature. Um, and they're very evolved in the work that they do and very well established. And so for us, being smaller teams, it was, it was more approachable and it made more sense to come to them when we see opportunities for proper alignment and opportunities to use their expertise. Um, you know, the period poverty initiative was one of those. Whitney and her team just executed some really, really thoughtful um, welcome boxes for interns and hires from the National Society of Black Engineers as well. And when we are trying to be thoughtful and have it at top of mind, when and how and where can we partner with them? It takes intentionality, but it's on us to have that intentionality they're doing great work all the time. Um, and they do reach out to us if they see opportunities, but they're not heavily involved in our work. So I think it's, it's our responsibility and it should be our responsibility um, to engage with them and pull on them when we feel like we have the opportunity to do so. Whitney, I don't know if you feel differently about that, but like they're out there solving world hunger. <laughs> and we're not. Well, and, and something to add to that, Amanda, is, you know, the work that they're doing is so powerful um, that as a marketing professional, um, I think CR is really open to our team um, building additional awareness of their work and also using that as a tool to attract talent. Right. Um, so, I mean, they're not only are we learning and some of the work is already done for us in terms of existing partnerships with organizations or charities, um, but we can also um, uh, we have a we have an additional megaphone that we can build awareness and um, uh, amplify the good that we're doing within our organization and the good that's coming out of CR. Well, and in our other project work too, I feel like we're really well received by them. They, they are welcoming with open arms anytime we pull on them for an opportunity that we, we feel like corporate responsibility brings value to the table for one of our strategies. Another point to, the, to, to, to that is um, 
by leveraging your team members in different groups, um, and I believe Amanda made this point earlier, um, you're really taking advantage of their expertise, So, uh, which creates space uh, for uh, our marketing team to do what we do best um, while leaning on the CR team uh, to, to focus on what they do best. And um, at the end of the day, we end up having a really great product to mm-hmm. bring to our candidates and share Uh, the impact that we're making. I can honestly say some of the things that I am most proud of since working at Cummins are the things that where we got to partner with corporate social responsibility. Um, It's the type of stuff that gives you meaning and meaningfulness into the work that you're doing because jobs are life changing, but it's nice to have jobs be life changing and do other good things as well. I love it. I'm super inspired just hearing it too. I was taking notes and I heard, you know, I I think there's two ways you can look at it. One is just how do we work cross-functionally? And some of the things I heard you say is sometimes we have to be bold. You have to ask questions, how to navigate and form those relationships that are outside of your own kind of silo, be really intentional about it, um, leverage other folks and other teams expertise. And then, you know, really cool, Whitney, you mentioned that both of you teaming up with CR is yet another way to kind of continue to not only leverage their expertise, but also promote another avenue to promote their work. So um, really showing that kind of win-win that you described as well. So thank you both. You had mentioned in some, uh, a little earlier a couple um, of the specific ways and how some of these collaborations have actually manifested themselves. And I was hoping that you might be able to actually, um, we could get into some of these tangible ways and you could walk me through that those examples. Um, the first was the, the period poverty campaign, um, Amanda, that you mentioned earlier. Would you be able to, to tell us more about that, what that looked like, some of the outcomes you saw, and um, if it was relevant also to collaborate? collaborating with CR? Yeah, I think, you know, with that initiative, it really started with, we just had a problem to solve. We wanted to engage more authentically and more deeply with um, some intended demographics. And, And the instance at hand was the Society of Women Engineers. We wanted to engage more with women. Um, We wanted to connect with them in a way that was more meaningful at that event as well. Um, And, you know, Whitney's team was a lot of the inspiration. We had just um, come through a new employer value proposition um, launch. And that was really thoughtful and insightful because one of the things that came out was, well, a lot of companies have the same values. Um, Those words, everybody's got something around environmentalism or sustainability or around diversity or around caring or excellence. Um, Not all companies live those values. And overwhelmingly, the research and focus group showed that Cummins does. They're not words on a wall. They are something you experience. They are something that you feel as a part of our culture. We wanted to bring that feeling to people who just interacted with us, not just employees, but how could we give that same experience and that same understanding of our values and who we are as a culture to people who are coming by our recruiting booth and who are interacting with us. Um, We're very well kept secret in terms of, I think sometimes our culture and how authentic it truly is um, inside as an employee. And we wanted to share some of that with people outside because it is our secret sauce. It's, It's what makes us who we are. And in addition, we have been looking at potentially creative ways to minimize spend on swag, plastic things have our logo on it that are 100% what everybody does. It's totally standard, but does a water bottle with our logo on it or EOS chapstick with our logo on it really tell you something about our brand? So we really wanted to design these moments Um, and we wanted it to be very core and centric to women. And so um, we started doing a little research and we started learning more about how many young women are impacted by period poverty. Um, You know, in the Anaheim area, which is where the conference was, the previous year, roughly 88,000 young women missed school when they were on their periods because they didn't have access to pads, to tampons, 
to menstruation cups, to period panties. At Cummins, we believe empowering your potential. And that also means powering the potential of the next generation of female engineers. And how are we gonna power their potential if they can't even make it to class? So we decided to go kind of big, kind of bold, got rid of all of our plastic junk, um, did some benchmarking and decided, you know what, everybody who comes to our booth, we're gonna talk to them about periods. We're gonna talk to them about marginalized populations of girls, how it impacts their future and their potential. And we're gonna sponsor a period for one month for every person who comes to our booth. Um, and more than that, we also wanted people to be inspired and to inspire others. So when people came to our booth, um, we asked them to write a note of inspiration to those girls, the same ones. Corporate responsibility is who brought girls into the table. Oh, so we wanted people to be inspired as well um, and to inspire someone else. So through that program, we, we had great measurable outcomes. But that program wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for Whitney's team as well. And the relationships she has with employer brand and marketing, as well as corporate responsibility. Good ideas are one thing. Seeing them through and getting them executed so you can actually make a difference is something else, especially in a very large matrix environment. And her team is who was able to make that vision come to life and to get the support and sponsorship so that way we could move forward with it. Um, we chose not to brand the notes of inspiration. We just wanted them to feel very pure. And I'd be lying if I didn't, say, I didn't admit the fact that I kind of enjoyed seeing some of my middle-aged male colleagues out there like the Oprah of periods talking to candidates about you're sponsoring a girl's period for one month and you're sponsoring a girl's period for one month. Um, and it created a really authentic experience. There were young women um, who were tearing up in our booth, talking about their own experiences with homelessness as a teenager, particularly you know when they were younger and um, after the housing crisis. There were people telling us, international students sharing with us just really appalling, horrific stories that they had experienced or their sisters had experienced. And what a huge barrier this is to someone being able to actually achieve their potential. It was really moving. It was really inspiring. Um, and what we did is we... Um, we really just led with our values. Caring is a core value at Cummins and we wanted people to feel that and to be a part of it. We actually had people coming to our booth who maybe weren't familiar with our company. We had recruiters from other organizations signing their kids up in our candidate system because they felt like our organization was a place they would want their child to work at. I think that's really meaningful because it, to me it means they felt our values, they experienced it. And not only that, we had record foot traffic. Uh, we saw a 213% increase in female engagement at that event. We no longer were putting plastic swag with our logo on there out there um, to be thrown away before someone leaves the conference or things of that nature. We sponsored uh, approximately 900 periods that day and sent 900 notes of inspiration to Girls Inc. as well. Um, and we actually surveyed the people who came to our booth afterwards and we asked them, how did it impact your understanding of our values? How did it change the perception of us as a potential employer for you? Would you want us to keep doing things like this in the future? Or would you prefer if we go with just a traditional non-for-profit? Overwhelmingly, the individuals that responded said, no, do more, do this, keep doing this. And it makes your company more attractive to me. And it helps me understand and feel your values of caring, your values of diversity and inclusion, and your values of sustainability. Um, it was a really special moment for us. And it was a really great proof of concept that we can carry with us to other partnerships to other events, to other relationships in very meaningful ways. Nailed it. And it's just so, it's so inspiring. And it's, 
the outcomes you described too are not only great. I mean, yes, making a really unique and you know long term and inspiring social impact, but also being able to um, increase you know uh, brand uh, engagement and awareness, um, be able to to recruit some of the talent that you're looking to recruit really stand out. I mean, all of those things are just unbelievable. So thank you for sharing. And Whitney, I know um, we had talked and you referenced, or um, one of you had referenced earlier, the recent intern boxes that you did as well. I believe that's what you would call it at Cummins, but I would love to dive a little bit into that too. What, what that looked like, what that project was, maybe some of the outcomes and some of the ways that you also worked with your CR counterparts. So going into our 2021 intern season for the summer, we knew that, uh, you know, nearly 70% of our interns that we were bringing on board with us were going to be virtual and remote. We knew that there was a need for us to um, make an impression, reinforce uh, the positivity in their decision in coming on board with Cummins for their summer internship uh, program and experience. So our employer brand team focused on collecting and curating a box of, um, you know, giveaways and gifts that were meaningful and intentional. Uh, We were able to purchase and procure um, some items that were local to the state of Indiana, where our global headquarters is located. And we procured those items through uh, Black-owned and women-owned businesses uh, here locally in the state. Uh, The second piece that I think was really meaningful and is going to be received really well is um, our partnership with Corporate Responsibility and identifying a organization, a not-for-profit, that we could donate to in honor of our interns this year. Um, We were able to provide a donation uh, to Rights for Girls. Uh, Rights for Girls is an organization um, that focuses on supporting predominantly black and brown girls in uh, mainstreaming conversations around justice reform, uh, gendered violence, and making that a priority uh, in in supporting um, the the girls that come in through the organization. And another piece that was really, uh, you know, meaningful as well as, you know, we show up as a brand uh, uh, that is inclusive and equitable. And we talk about our culture um, in different, um, you know, virtual event settings, specifically the National Society of Black Engineers, Society of Women Engineers from this previous um, uh, fall program where we were recruiting talent. So I think these welcome boxes really reinforce our culture um, through those conversations with our people um, when we were when when candidates were going through the recruiting process, uh, so that they can feel and see. Um, the same value showing up in, uh, you know, the simple welcome box that they receive at their home. Sounds like a really great program. And remember, if you're getting value from this video, we'd really appreciate you hitting that like button. And the question of the day for you is, how has your CSR team or teams uh, work cross-functionally with other teams or departments in, in your organization? And what strategies and tips would you have? Let us know in the comment section below. Coming at it from a non-CSR professional role, so what would advice would you give CSR practitioners, leaders, professionals who got inspired by the examples that you've provided today? And like, how would they go about starting or uh, infusing that social impact or starting these CSR programs into um, their businesses and working with people like yourself? I just would really encourage individuals to think big and think multidimensionally. So if you're, if you're looking at working with an organization that's going to help support mock interviews or resume writing workshops, why not get those people real jobs in your own company? Um, You know, think bigger and make the information accessible and transparent for partners. Um, That has probably been one of the areas because so many CSR orgs are so big or they're their own arms, they're doing good work all the time and they're just moving along with their projects. Um, But it's because they've made themselves accessible to us 
that we've been able to reach out, that we can learn, that we know who the right points of contact are. Otherwise, we might just be operating blissfully unaware um, of how we could be doing more good in different ways. Um, we have great opportunities uh, to do greater as an organization. And I think if I were to sit in a corporate social responsibility position, or if I was in, say, maybe a younger or smaller organization just getting that started, I would think very multidimensionally. I'd be thinking about my supplier diversity. I'd be thinking about my employer brand proposition. I'd be thinking about what types of organizations are we partnering with? Um, and how can we maximize those partnerships to do the greatest good across our organization in ways that maybe are less than traditional as well? And Whitney, from, from your perspective, if, if a CSR, like let's say you were in a, a smaller or a younger organization, how would you, what kind of advice would you provide a, a, I guess a new CSR pro to work with, with you and maybe your team? Yeah, I recommend it to really focus on the stakeholders that could be involved in a project. I think oftentimes, um, you know, CR professionals are creating that charter for that uh, scope, particular scope of work. Um, But thinking outside of the box in terms of who could benefit from this work. um, And uh, I would say, communications professionals, uh, not just not just the ones that you may partner with on a regular basis to promote um, for your use and your channels, but also um, widening that um, idea of bringing in communications professionals, marketing professionals um, to help amplify the work that you're doing. Um, I think even, even though we are a technology company that's really focused on engineering um, and we have many different forms of customers. I think customers, investors, um, they come to expect a company the size of Cummins to be doing this work. And I think with that expectation um, comes a lot of uh, uh, responsibility and also value that they can see in the organization aside from, you know, purchasing that product. They're also, um, you know, forming perception around that, that particular company um, and, and the, the work that they're doing outside of that technology that they're providing. Same thing uh, that can be said for, for our work. Um, you know, it, it may be a corporate responsibility project or a not-for-profit uh, relationship that's being sparked, but our candidates come to expect that out of an employer such as Cummins, and we can use that uh, as a way to attract and, um, you know, really entice candidates to, to feel and understand our culture. One thing that Whitney and I talked about and explored is don't let your product brand limit what you do in those relationships. You know, we see it a little differently from our perspective from employer brand and talent acquisition, because the thing that we are selling is the authenticity of our culture and our values. So while period poverty or, you know, rights for girls might not feel aligned to the products we sell, it is aligned to the heart of our culture and to to not um, negate that because that's really, really important. And it's an intangible. um, That's really, really an art and a science when it comes to the type of work that like our employer brand team does but I think corporate responsibility, the work that they do, it's, it's proof of the culture and it demonstrates um, the actual actions and the decisions being made in an organization. So it's a really powerful storytelling. That's amazing. One thing I keep thinking about too, and you, you too might not be the ones that know this data point um, given your roles, but I'm curious, you know, we talked a little bit about how these collaborations not only increase social impact, which is a great thing and really help from a, you know, retention or attract, attracting top talent perspective. I'm curious, do you have any insights about how some of these collaborations and kind of the, the way that your culture is really focused on, on doing good and, you know, uh, making social impact has from an employee perspective, you know, are, are employees engaging more? Are they, um, 
you know, supportive um, and happy and in within the culture as well. My gut feeling is it's just going to be a yes, and we move on to the next question. But um, I, I was thinking about that a lot as you guys were talking. Yeah, in our organization, we can actually log our corporate responsibility hours as well. So um, it is about doing good, but it's also about recognizing that employees are engaged in doing good. Part of the inspiration around period poverty was actually a localized event at one of our facilities where the organization, rather than giving away, local leadership decided to make toiletry packs and dignity packs for people in a local homeless shelter. Um, and, you know, we see lots of great engagement from our employees every single year. I believe the CARE initiative, we have over 200 employee volunteers just in localized communities that are helping to support that work. Um, even just probably in the next few weeks, Whitney and I will be speaking with both local public school districts and police departments about how can they be mindful of DE and I work and being equitable with the community and how they recruit talent into their own workforces. So um, while at Cummins, doing good has definitely always been a pillar and caring is a core value for us as an organization. Our company also recognizes and rewards the type of people that we have in our ranks and the fact that they are doing good because we want more of that. Whitney, I don't know if you have any insights around that or. Well, I think our corporate responsibility work also has a role to play in reinforcing our employer value proposition to our internal employee base. It's almost, I, I believe it can almost be seen as a retention tool, right? Reinforcing that I decided to come and start and begin my career journey with Cummins and seeing stories like this and efforts by our employees, um, by the teams that are responsible for this work is, a is definitely a retention tool. Great, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I just have, we just have one more question for, for both of you is, so do you have any advice, whether it's CSR professionals or not, like to any of our listeners, like how do we go about or in your opinion, how do we go about embedding social impact into every aspect of our, of our business? I think it's okay to demand more, like of your company, of how your money is spent, how decisions are made for vendors, and of your own work and your own strategies. We could have easily just, you know, kind of went with like a fluffy non for profit in anything, but we wanted to do something that was intersectional, that was thoughtful, that felt like it really resonated with the intended audience as well as our values as an employer. And we went to bat for it. Um, not everything is well received by everyone. Um, and sometimes there are people who just don't get it, but I think it's about pushing those boundaries yourself as an individual and in what you have a span of control over, as well as I think it's appropriate and it's timely to ask more of your company, um, whether it's through your ERGs, through your own leadership, through your supplier decisions. I think it's it's the right time. And if we haven't been doing it already, we should be asking more of our company, more of our CEOs and, and, um, and reach out and make those connections and those partnerships internally to help you move some of those asks across the finish line um, and to celebrate the wins too. And I also believe that everything that um, has transpired, transpired, everything that's transpired in the last year, now's the perfect time to take some of those risks and to ask those questions and um, to spark a new change in how we think about our work. Um, I, I, I believe that in term, you know, in terms of our work between Amanda and I with talent acquisition and, and candidate attraction, you know, candidates uh, have an eye 
for what's authentic right now and what individual, what in, in, in with, with what companies are putting out there externally, um, you know, they can see pretty quickly what is, you know, considered, you know, woke washing. Uh, and that's, that's something that we're mindful of, but um, as, as professionals in this space, now's the time to really go out and push boundaries and, um, and, and that, that's, that's exactly what my advice would be to someone who, who has, uh, an interest, who knows what is the right thing to do and who wants to see, um, you know, an additional spark for change. And if you want to learn more about other, uh, corporate social responsibility strategies and tips, you got to check out this playlist here, as well as this playlist for other workplace giving strategies. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in our next episode.